Well, students, we're gonna take your totem poles, we're gonna turn them into a collage today by cutting them out and gluing them down to a background. And then we'll create uh, a background that resembles the Pacific Northwest. You can add a few other things in there that um, you can invent yourself, but I'll talk about a few things that we would see in that kind of landscape. You can see that I still have to color this one. Um, I'm not gonna do any coloring to begin. I'm gonna be cutting it out and then we will finish coloring those parts later. But the only thing you need right now are gonna be your scissors. Please cut things out carefully. You can see that I'm just following that line, trying not to have any of this brown paper that's on the edge showing. Just following right close to the side. If you have a line that's a little bit hard, I'll show you here. Um, if it's a little bit hard to turn the scissors, like it is right here, like right here, it's gonna be tricky to get my scissors to turn. I would just go back to the outside and cut this, and then this piece just can come off. And that makes it a little bit easier if you're, if you can't get around a corner, if it's a little bit of a detailed spot. So kind of the same thing here, I can just trim this. And just go back to the outside and take those pieces off. So usually those are just kind of those sharp corner, those uh, like quick corners or really narrow angles. So here I'm gonna finish trimming that out and you do not need to cut it as quickly as I am. Please take your time, follow those edges. Once you have it cut, then we're gonna glue it to this white paper. I would like you to start thinking as you're cutting it what you're gonna have um, in your background. Now, if you cut it like this and you have a bunch of space around it, like for example, like this. So you can see like there's still this brown paper. I'm gonna ask you to trim it up and cut it again. So please make sure it's trimmed up nice and kind of smooth around those edges. Any of your scraps, I would like you to um, pick up and you can put them in the scrap bin or the recycling. And we'll take this and I'm gonna glue it down. It's okay if you get a little bit of glue on the table. I'm gonna have to wipe up the tables anyway. So um, please do not get glue on the white paper. We're gonna put the glue on the back of your totem pole. So I only need to turn the glue up just a little bit as I go. I'm gonna glue the middle, but the most important part to glue are the edges and that's why I said it's okay if you do get a little bit of glue on the table because I do want you to get these edges well. So just turn the glue up a little bit at a time, work your way around your totem And you can see that's already gonna be my second time going around the edges to make sure I don't have any edges or corners popping up. And I'm just gonna put it down one more time in the middle. Once I have that on here, I'm just gonna kind of line it up with the bottom of my paper. And it already looks cool. I, I love the way that looks. Then flip it over and rub your hand on the back. Then it won't smear any of your crayon, any of your work that you've already done. And it reminds me at the same time to put my name on the back. Once you have it pressed down good, flip it over. Make sure, like I wouldn't put it over here because that's where the glue is. Um, so make sure you put it in a clean spot. Now, once that is all set, then I'm gonna take my glue, I'm gonna turn it down push your cap on or twist it. This one's a twist on top. And I'm gonna get my pencil out and I'm gonna start my background. One thing that we would see in the Pacific Northwest would be mountains. And that's a good way for me to get my horizon line. So I'm gonna put that up pretty high on my page and I'm gonna have some of these mountains be um, taller and they're gonna go behind my totem. 
and I might have some that are like peeking out in the back here, creating different layers of mountains. Maybe adding a little bit of like a snow cap to them. And then I'm thinking kind of of um, our landscapes at the beginning of the year where I might have some smaller hills in the front and I was thinking maybe I could make a river that looks like it's gonna be disappearing into the back. So we said if you have something like that, you can have it start really big and then as it gets further away, it would just go right into a point here and erase that line. So then that river is gonna look like it's vanishing kind of out into the mountains. Then we had also said that um, when we did landscapes, if we have some of these and we separate these into lines here, then that can create some different fields. Um, if you do, I did draw lightly, so then I can put maybe a tree in here and then where those lines were, I would just erase them to make it look like the tree is in the front, but it allows me to give those a little bit of different color. I'm gonna put some bark on this tree, maybe some zigzag lines for grass. Maybe um, I kind of like the idea of, since this is getting further away, I've got a big tree, I'm gonna have a medium tree, and I'm gonna have a really tiny tree. Then it looks like it's going off into the distance. With this river, I might have some waves that start off kind of bigger. Maybe I'm gonna have a rock or something that's in the water. And then I'm gonna do kind of some medium sized waves and then I'm gonna have really small ones. So start off big and gradually get smaller. Thinking maybe over here, since this is something really close to me, we said in the Pacific Northwest, you would have lots of trees. So I'm gonna have this be my biggest tree because it's closest to me. It's gonna probably have the most amount of detail too. So I'm gonna be doing like some maybe knots in the wood, maybe add more leaves and things, maybe some zigzag lines. And then I'm gonna have another field back here. It's gonna be a different color. Now for your um, sky, you can decide whatever you want for your sky. I think I'm gonna have my sun be setting and I'm gonna have it be a, a big sun. It's gonna be setting behind these mountains. And I'm gonna make a pattern of like big line, little line, big line little line, big line. So it looks like it's really shining bright out in the mountains here. And then I thought it would be fun to do some clouds that are kind of layered on top of each other. So I'm gonna do some that are in front and some that are behind. Maybe do another section of clouds here because they're kind of in a grouping. Maybe I'm gonna have a bird flying by or a little bit of wind or something. If you do, finish out your background, please raise your hand and I will give you a marker. We'll take our marker and I would like you to trace everything out. That's kind of where I'm thinking we'll get today, um, but I'll do one other little example. Um, if you get it all traced out, think trace and then think erase. So I know this totem pole is not colored, yours will be, um, but I would like you to trace and then erase anything out. Now, if you do have some of your totem left to color, I would like you to finish adding a little bit of color to this, making sure to you know press that color on hard. Think about colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So you could do my orange and orange is next to pink, and we would get those things colored in. Now, if your totem is already finished and it's all colored in, then you could start the background. Now, we probably won't do much of that today because we'll be doing most of that next time. So here, we would use kind of that same idea of what we've already practiced from our landscapes before of doing some shading where I'm gonna, that's the main thing that I want you to work on if you start today, would be um, just working on the grass here, shading from maybe this dark green then using that zigzag line to do this lighter green. I'm gonna go into my yellow green. And then once I run out of colors, 
then I just take it and repeat it like a pattern. So then I would go with this, and you can see I went a little bit too quick, and I got some on my totem pole. So be careful not to go so fast that you get carried away. But I would bring that color, I'm gonna go around my tree, all the way up to where the next line would be. Fill in that space in. One thing I don't want you to color today, um, if you get this far, please don't color the sky. I'm gonna try to find out uh, a way that we might be able to paint the sky. So save that, I'll talk to you about that later. Um, so we're not wor worried about getting too much of that done. If I get some of this shading done, then I would just continue working on my shading in these other spaces and work kind of from the bottom up. Um, I could work on getting a little bit of this tree colored and using my mixes of not just using brown, but I might use some of this brown. Then we'll put a little bit of this light brown into it. And then to make some of the brown a little bit darker, I'll probably use a little bit of gray. Connecting all this to our prior knowledge of things that we already know about with landscapes and color mixing and color wheel and all that good stuff. I might make this a fall tree and make this with some reds and oranges or something like that. Um, so that it doesn't look like green on green. But let's have fun working on these. We will work more on them next time so you don't need to have them all colored. The main thing is get your totem pole glued on, um, draw your background, trace it with marker, and then if there's time, we'll start adding a little bit of color. But. Let's have fun working on these.